Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video, I want to show you how to implement the FIFO queue in C++ as an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the C version uh, that Dr. Dr. Yarabali did in the last video and make a copy over there and take the H and make a copy over here. And I'm going to rename this guy as C++. Okay, and I'm going to convert the C implementation into C++. All right, so the next I'm going to do is open the, uh, the project. Uh, this is my lab. This is my lab uh, eight starter project, uh, and I'm going to add add existing item uh, to existing C++ item. Okay, I guess that's all. And there it is, right there. Add it. Okay, so in Kyle, if you call something CPP, it'll implement it as C++. Okay, so this is not C++. C. This is just C, and so I'm gonna. I'm going to change uh, this to C++. So now uh, I need a name of the um, I need a name of the uh, of the class, and so I'm going to call it Q. I think so it doesn't overload. Uh, so I'm going to include the header file fifo dot h. Okay, and then I'm going to open the header file. All right, so this again is Garibaldi's header file. And so I want to call, create a class, okay? And so I'm going to call it, I don't know, Q. So when you create a class, you use class and then you give it a name, Q, okay? Uh, and then this is my class. Again, I'm in the header file. And so in here, I can now specify my private, uh, my private entities and my public entities, all right, public. Okay, so I'm gonna design what stuff goes public and what stuff goes private. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, see, see, yeah, there's lots of ways you can organize things. Um, and so here in the header file, again, it's prototypes, but uh, you can place, I'm gonna place my, um, I'm gonna place my structures here, these guys here. Yeah. I'm going to place them uh, here as private entities. Now, this is C++, and so this guy has to come out of there. X goes up here. All right. And, yeah, that's why we all this extra comments. That's your volley. Since it's C++, it's already private, so we don't need static. Okay? So, so far, what I've done is just duplicate exactly what Yarabali had, and so I'm going to put these uh, prototypes also in there. Okay, X. These are public prototypes. Let's see. Yeah. Like that. That goes over there. Make it pretty. All right. So here's my put. Now, of course, you could have put all the comments in there. That would have been a better code. But. All right. So we got the one more prototype. Again, if you want to know how these functions work, watch the last video. That's what Yarabali taught you how these things work. What I'm doing in this video is essentially converting the converting the C++ uh, to, and those are comments. I can save that. I don't need that. I can go over there. Okay. So these are the, um, the public methods. Uh, for this class and these are the private variables. All right, so now I'm going to implement The functions not in Slipa in that one. Okay, so now we want to implement them and so uh, In order to implement them. We are going to uh, uh, define their prototype. So um, the uh, Constructor, okay, this is essentially going to be the constructor. So this is Q Bump up. I don't need FIFO. Ah, come back here. I delete. Yeah, that was. I don't need that. Okay, Q. Okay. So this is the constructor uh, for the Q. I got to have a prototype for it. So again, over here, uh, I don't have that. I don't have to initialize it. Uh, I'm not going to call it put and get that's part of the system. Okay, so there's my constructor as a public function, and over here now I've implemented it. Okay, so now it's happy. 
And so again, it's the same code uh, we set the that set the thing initialize. Okay, now this is not called FIFO. We're going to call this uh, Q. All right, here we go. Uh, Q pound pound. Uh, notice the similarity in in in, in format between the uh, between the uh, C++ version and the C version, okay? All he did was uh, replace the two semicolons with um, with an underline. Okay, so over here, I got it. In, in Kyle, you got to save things for this thing to come through. Okay, so, yep, yep, I just got a different prototype. Over here, uh, you called it eights. Try that. There we go. All right. Um, I'd like to do one thing to this uh, program uh, in order to, um, to 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 make it more general, and that is over here. I could uh, had a type def uh, for the for the type for the for the uh, uh, FIFO type. Uh, and and for example, if I wanted to make um, if I wanted to change this from a care to a 16 point integer, uh, I could call, I could create a new type uh, called um, FIFO type. And so this way with one fell swoop, okay, these are still indices uh, right here. I change those uh, and then over here, I save that. And over here, I change this thing to type and one more. Right there. Okay, so now with one flick of the pen, I can change the type of my cue. Uh, in this particular case, I changed it from a care to a 16-bit integer. Because in the next video, I'm going to show you how I would use this cue to actually redo lab 8. All right, so for now, uh, all I did is to, to convert a C function to a, to a C++ version is to decide the arc architect. And the architect of a C++ <clears throat> is very similar to C. Uh, oops, one more. One more. That's got to be that. Okay, so, all right. Um, to convert the architect of C into C++ by deciding what's public, deciding what's private, how to encapsulate it so that it's most useful. All right, uh, bye for now. Uh, uh, FIFOs will be a very, very important data structure. And even though we, uh, and you would have seen it in Lab 9, uh, but... I promise you, you're going to see FIFOs a lot in the future. All right, enjoy.